Hello everyone. My name is Ashish and welcome to this Tag Instance channel. So today in this lecture, we are going to discuss about our asynchronous execution support and Spring. And also we are going to see how the Spring support the asynchronous execution and how we can implement a asynchronous execution in Spring. So first of all, I'm going to discuss about when we should go with our asynchronous execution. So when you want a separate execution and you don't want to wait for the execution of the cold method, then in this scenario, you can use a asynchronous execution. So asynchronous execution will be done by a separate thread. So let's take one example to understand better. So normally a program would run from top to like bottom. But sometimes one operation or a method may take a lot of time and it could make the other method to wait. So in this cases or in this like scenario, it makes sense to uh, it makes sense to run a few method in a parallel and where we can use our asynchronous execution. And this is also called as asynchronous execution. So let's take another example to understand better. So for example, uh, like there can be a API need to wait for a payment to complete. So in this case, if the payment process takes time, the customer won't get a confirmation like notification, right? To handle this, we can, we can initiate a payment process in a separate thread and then and then like provide a incomplete order details or a complete order details. If the payment fails, then the order can be like retried later or marked as a success or a failure, right? So in this type of scenarios or uh, uh, like process, we can use a asynchronous execution where we have to execute the two method in a like in a like a parallel manner right so for this scenario we can go with a like a multiple threading uh, like capabilities and however for maintaining this thread is a headache for the developer so for this reason spring boot provide a asynchronous annotation where we can use this asynchronous uh, annotation to execute uh, the process in a separate manner or in a parallel manner so that we can execute two tasks in a parallel, right? So now let's discuss how we can achieve this. So there are basically three steps you have to follow to achieve this in a Spring Boot uh, application. So first of all, you have to use at the rate enable asynchronous annotation. So at the rate enable async annotation, this switches a spring ability to run a at the rate async method in a background thread pool, right? So we have to use at the rate enable asynchronous in a, our main class. And second step, you have to use at the rate async annotation to the method. So let's say that you want to execute some method separately or in a parallel, right? So in that method, you have to annotate that method with at the rate async. So this is the second step. And here are the two points to keep in mind. The method which you want to execute separately should be annotated with a async and also it should be public. Right, it should not be private or default method. It should be public so that it can be proxied. Right, and here the self innovation, the self invocations does not work because it bypass the proxy and calls the underlying method directly. So here you cannot uh, like uh, uh, like here you cannot do a self invocation, and also you have to make that method as a public for which you want to execute that method separately, right? So these are the two steps you have to do and you have to keep these two point in mind. First, the method should be marked as public and the second, the self-invocation of the method is not allowed. Now the third point 
is creating executor by using a thread pull task executor class. So here we have to use a thread pull task executor class and, and the thread pull executor class is a spring class. It's allow us to create the pool and the pool has a uh, like n number of threads and we can uh, use that thread to run our method separately so these are the three steps you have to follow if you want to implement a synchronous execution in your spring boot application right so now we are going to see how we can implement or how we can write a asynchronous execution in our spring boot so for this what i am going to do I am going to implement in our like project. So here I am not going to create any like new project. And if you remember, if you have seen my like the previous lecture, so there I have shown you how we can use the validation or how we can implement the validation in a Spring Boot by using a Hibernate validator, right? So in that project only, I am going to change and I am going to implement a asynchronous execution right so, yeah so this is my like uh, yeah so so here is my like hibernate validation project which i have created in my previous lecture and this is the source folder inside the source folder if we'll go then here i have already created these folders so this is the controller so inside this folder we can see the user controller dot java and in this this is the rest controller and this is a request mapping and this is the url and here I have used one endpoint add user. So basically this project is used to add a user in a database, right? So for that I have created one controller class and right. And this is my model package inside the model package. I have the user dot Java class and this contained uh, the UID and the UID is auto generated and here we have u name attribute and u email and the u ct so these are the attributes i am using for the user class and this is my repository folder so inside the repository folder i am using a jpa repository so which give us the basic like uh, the basic like uh, the crud operations method and here we have the service package so inside the service package we have a service class user service class so if you will see the user service class so you can see that is marked as at the red service and this is the method the save user method and here it is using the user repository to save the data to our database right so this is a project which i have made in my earlier uh, like session or the lecture so now I'm going to show you how we can implement a asynchronous execution in this project. So here, if you will see, this is the controller, right? So here we have only one endpoint that is add method. And here is my main class from which our Spring Boot is getting started. So first step you have to follow, as I mentioned earlier, so you have to mark your main class with the at the rate enable async, right? So this is going to enable your Spring Boot with a asynchronous execution in the background, right? So this is the first step you have to follow. And now you have to, and now you have to uh, implement one method uh, means a bean method in which we are going to use a thread pull task executor class. So let me create one method with the task executor. Uh, all right. So this is the task executor, and I'm going to name this class as a, a sync. executor all right so inside this class i am going to create the object of a thread pool task executor
ओके थ्रेड पुल टास्क एग्जीक्यूटर ऑल राइट सो लेट्स कीप द नेम एज एग्जीक्यूटर न्यू थ्रेड पुल टास्क executor all right yeah so i believe i have done some mistake in the spelling yeah so now it's fine so i have created one uh, object of a thread pool executor class right so if you will see here so thread pool executor class is a class of a concurrent thread pool executor so let's go and see what we have the method here so here you can see so here you can see this is a thread pool task executor uh, class right and we have uh, like the methods uh, like the cancel remaining task and the execute method and we have get core pool size method so this method return the current pool size and we have the active count of the thread so this method returns the number of currently active threads all right and also we have get a uh, maximum pool size so we can get the pool size of our thread pool by using this method and and in this way we have a number of methods which we can use and also we have set max pool size so this method is used to set your pool size right so this is the method we can use of uh, the thread pool task executor so now let's go to our code and here i am going to use the certain method right so this is our executor instance yeah so in the executor uh, instance i am going to first of all i am going to use the set core pool size so here i am going to set uh, the pool size as of 20 threads all right so next method i am going to use uh, executor dot uh, executor dot set max uh, pool size so maximum i am going to use the thread as 1000 it means that for this execution only 1000 threads can be used so in a pool only 1000 uh, thread will be available right so here i have set the maximum pool size and now next i am going to use the executor uh, set wait for task to complete on shutdown so before shutdown is going to wait uh, so i am going to keep this as a true right so next method we can use the executor dot set thread uh, thread name prefix so i can give the name of my thread by this and here we can pass the string uh, as the name of your um, thread right so for now i am passing this as a thread name right and here simply we can return our executor and this is a uh, and this is the bean so we have to annotate this with the bean and here i am going to name provide the name of the bean as uh, let's say async all right so async is my bean name all right yeah so inside my main class i have created one method a bean method which is returning a task executor object and here i have created the ta uh, thread pool task executor so this is creating a pool of thread like a thread pool and i have set and i have used certain method to set the core pool size as 20 and the maximum pool size is 1000 and wait for the task to complete on shutdown will be true and i have assigned the name to my thread as a async right so this is the method you have to uh, uh, like this is the method you have to use the bean method in your like the main class so now let's go to our service class so inside the service class i am going to create one method a method which we want 
to execute in a like uh, with this thread in a like a parallel right so for that we can create one method so let me create one method uh, so i'm going to keep the return type as a void so here i'm going to create one method which is going to fetch all the users we have saved in the database right so for that we can use the user repository and we can use uh, the find all method of the jp repository to get all the user object present in the database so yeah uh, and i want this method should be executed in a separate thread so for that we have to annotate this um, we have to annotate uh, this method with the async and here we can define async execution right right so this is my like the get method so this method will be executed with a separate thread so let's put some like sleep method uh, like the sleep method we can use so that we can show that this method is executing print talent so here i want to print some data for now sleep method started all right and here i can use the sleep method for that thread dot sleep and i want to make this sleep for a uh, let's say 10 second all right in the same way we can print here sleep method ended all right and after this what i will do i will uh, i will use the user repository uh, to fetch all the users so what we can do we can use the user repository dot find all method so this find all method is going to take all the users so this users will be in a list so for that here i am going to use the list to store let's say as a response all right so yeah so here we are getting the list of a response and in this list we will have all the users present in the database which we have saved all right so what we can do here we can run uh, for each method to show you the content of the user right all right so simply here we can use the system dot out dot printl in and then here i can show the response data all right so user dot to string so this user dot to string is going to uh, is uh, is going to uh, display all the users information in our console all right so here we are using the try so let's use the catch also so here i am going to use the interrupt exception because here we are using a sleep method so we have to handle this with the interrupt so that if the sleep method is interrupted then we can get to know inside our catch block and here i am using the print stack trace so that we can print uh, the exception uh, information right so this is the method the get user method so simply the get method user is taking or fetching all the user information from the database and i want this method to be executed in a separate thread right so for that i have used a sync annotation here and we are making this execution right so now let's go to our controller class 
so inside the control class we need to uh, to execute this method right so let's say that we have already we have the endpoint add user so let's say that when this end user add user endpoint will be executed then if uh, then after the save user i am going to execute this uh, method so for that we have the user service right so just we have created one method that get user so i am going to call this get user method from this endpoint so as this endpoint is called after saving the user this get user will be called and here we are using async annotation so it will be invoked with a, a separate thread right so thread is going to be picked from the thread pool and then that thread is going to execute this method in a parallel way right so in this way and here we can see that we already have some logs so we can see over our console that whether it is working fine or not all right so let's save all this mm. all right so we are done with our implementation now let's check so our server let's check that whether it is started or not Okay, so we are getting some error to not match condition or missing. Okay, so here we have uh, to match this name of the async with our application. So here I'm going to put this the same name. All right. Now again, let's save this. Yeah. So you can see here our application has been started in 1.517 right and this is the port number 8080 so now what i'm going to do i'm going to use the postman and then i'm going to hit this endpoint and here i'm going to pass the user information and as i will hit this endpoint then it should save the user and in the same time in the parallel it is going to get the user right so let's check that what we have so we have the request mapping at the uh, as the stag instance and also we have the post mapping with the save user right so let's go to our postman so here already i have prepared the url so this is the stag instance request mapping url and this is the save user as the post mapping url right and this is the user information i am passing so here i am not passing the uid because it is auto generated right so here in the model class you have seen we have name email and ct right so this is the asis name and the email i am passing so let's make this asis bhagat all right so now i am going to hit this with the post method so let's hit it so you can see that we got the url and here you can see yeah so here you can see that our sleep method is started and after some time the sleep uh, get ended after 10 second and then we got the response so we are getting all the response in the object because we have not uh, we don't have the two string method inside our user so no worries i am going to quickly i am going to add one two string here generate to a string all right so this is the basic to a string so i am like generating with my id now i am going to save it so again we are going to run this and then we are going to check the output right so here you have to observe that as i click uh, as i click uh, as that endpoint is executed then in the same time uh, our get all user is also getting executed and then it is uh, like taking the data right so let's change this to asis bhagat 1 uh, asis bhagat 1 at the rate uh, gmail and silly is my city name right so let's hit this all right now let's go to our id and here you can see sleep method is started so it means that at the same time 
uh, that thread is picked from the pool and then it's uh, call our get uh, user method and there we have put some slip and then it is taking all the information from the database right and then it is printing one by one in my console right so in this way we have seen how we can implement a asynchronous uh, execution so sometimes it is like very helpful in the project where we need to run a uh, like execution of the method in a parallel manner right so for that you have to simply uh, mark this our main class with the at the rate enable a async so this is going to activate asynchronous in the background of the project and then we have to create one bean method in which you have to create the object of a thread pool task executor and then you have to set some uh, like pool size or the co uh, core pool size or the maximum pool size so this all requirement is according to your requirement of the project and you can give the name of uh, the thread also or you can escape it right so this is all uh, uh, like according to your like requirement right so this is a two step you have to follow and also you have to mark uh, that method with the async right uh, with the async annotation which you want to execute in a with a separate thread in a parallel manner right so this method will be executed in a parallel manner and we are calling this method from our controller class with this endpoint add user and here we are calling this method so this so as this method is called so one thread will be picked from the thread pool and that thread will be responsible to execute this get user method in a parallel manner and we will get the result whatever logic you are going to write here so you can use uh, so here i have shown you by fetching the data from my database right all right guys thank you and have a nice day see you in the next lecture